Hey everyone, Cryption Gaming Jake here, bringing you a tutorial on the graphic settings for Warrock. I'll be talking about what each setting does and how they affect your frame rate, and at the end I'll show you the best graphic settings you can use. FPS is the number of how many frames you get per second. The higher your FPS is the smoother your gameplay will be. To see your FPS in game, download the free trial of Fraps, install it, run it, and you should see a yellow counter in one of the four corners of your screen. That is your FPS. Here is an example of 15 FPS, 30 FPS, 60 FPS, 80 FPS, and 140 FPS. FPS affects everything such as how fast your gun shoots, how fast your character moves, and how high your character jumps. FPS has a huge impact on your gameplay, and this might be why players seem to have an advantage over you. But, here are some ways that you can improve your FPS. Run as little amount of programs as you can while Warwick is running. Upgrade your computer hardware. And the one thing that brings us on to the next topic, optimizing your in-game graphic settings. In-game, view your options and open the graphic tab. Let's start with resolution. Resolution is a personal preference and it depends on the size of your monitor. For example, if you have a widescreen monitor then you might want to choose a widescreen resolution like these three down here. Personally, I don't have a widescreen monitor and I find that 1024x768 is good for me. Remember, the higher the resolution, the lower your FPS may drop. Now for the graphic settings, first of all choose custom settings, now we're going to work our way from the top to the bottom, but before I talk about them I just want to quickly remind you that every option that you set as low will give you a higher FPS and if you set them to high it will give you a lower FPS. Textures, every wall, box, floor, character, etc has a texture on them. This simply decides the quality of the texture, low makes the textures blurry whereas high makes them look nice and detailed. My personal preference is medium. My reason is that not only does it make the textures look decent enough, on Kali at ramps if you have low textures then you cannot see through the ramps, but if you have medium or high then you can see through the ramp. World Models as far as I'm aware only does two things. One, having a higher setting lets you see further and makes maps with fog look less foggier. Maps such as Marion, Ejawin, Karakum, DK, Outpost and more have this kind of fog. And number two, world models decide the distance you need to be to see a shadow, but I'll get into that later. My personal preference for world models is high, for the maps that have fog. Now on to physics. It's supposed to improve the ragdoll physics of dead bodies, but ragdoll physics take a lot of processing power from the CPU, thus having them on a high setting will give you FPS lag. My personal preference is low, as it does not affect your gameplay whatsoever. Effects Generally improves the look of things like muzzle flashes and grenade explosions, which in my opinion is unnecessary. One thing that is useful about effects though is that if you have it on medium or high it makes the yellow flash appear when someone shoots which can be useful to locate players in dark maps such as Artifact and Decay. The only downside is that when having effects on medium or high, each shell that falls to the ground makes an annoying sound. For that reason I have my effects on low. But you can have it on medium if you can stand the shell sound, as it is still useful in dark maps. And shadows. Shadows emit from players. Low shadows means no shadows. Medium shadows also means no shadows. High shadows are the ones you want because they stick out, in fact it should be known that high shadows cast east on all maps and that shadows also go through walls.
I'm going to go ahead and tell you that my personal preference for shadows is high as they are extremely useful. For example, let's pretend that we're playing Kali and the bomb is planted and I use spawn in a 1v1 situation. We haven't seen the player cross to the left yet, so that means that he is hiding somewhere in the bomb. Here are the three main places that the player could be hiding. Now I'm not sure if many players know this, but as I enter the bomb I first take a glance there to see if there is a shadow. That's right, if someone sits there on the map, a shadow pokes through on the other side of the wall. If a shadow is there, I know where to pre-fire when I bunny hop in. If a shadow isn't there, then at least I know that someone is not there and I can check that off. As soon as I bunny hop in, I quickly glance to the left. Shadow, kill him. If there's no shadow, he must be hiding behind the box. Check the box, kill him. The only other places that I've seen players sit in is at the far back of the bomb and behind the chairs on the left. Now what you want is high world models in combination with high shadows, because the lower your world models the closer you have to be standing to a player in order for the shadow to be seen. Here's an example on Dottenbori. When I lean out with low world models I see nothing, but when I lean out with high world models I see a shadow. So there you go, my official graphic settings are med high, low low high. Now that's all of the important stuff out of the way and I'll quickly tell you the last few settings on the left. Colour, always have this on 32 bit. 16 bit actually gives you more FPS lag for some reason. Bloodstain, doesn't do anything anymore. It used to make it so that when you shoot someone blood squirts out but that no longer works so just leave it off. Deco layers, it's supposed to draw extra decorative layers or something but I don't see what it does so I just leave it off just in case. Light map actually changes the way the whole map looks. I'm not sure if it gives FPS lag or not, it most likely does but it's a personal preference and I prefer to leave it off, but you can have it on if you want. Dynamic light, this only works if light map is on. It basically makes shadows look nicer but gives you big FPS lag so I'd recommend leaving it off like me. That's all for this video, I hope that you have found this useful, take care, subscribe for more and I'll see you in the next video.